I got interested in research towards the end of my medical school. Whilst I really enjoyed my clinical work, I thought something that I needed to learn afterwards is research skills to, to be a scientist, so to address bigger questions about not only just treating patients, also to know why people develop certain conditions and to find better ways of treating those conditions. In our lifetime, about 20% of people will suffer from a major depression. According to WHO, depression is one of the leading causes of disability, not only in developed countries, but also in developing countries. It is a debilitating illness because it's not only people experience low mood, but also there are psychological feelings of, of hopelessness, worthlessness, excessive guilt and also physical symptoms such as extreme fatigue, sleep problem, concentration difficulties. And you can see how that could affect an individual. Depression is also associated with poor physical health. There is evidence to show that people who suffer from depression, they are at a greater risk of developing chronic physical illness such as cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. So depression has, uh, has negative consequences uh, in a number of ways. Two thirds of patients would get better with psychotherapy or antidepressant drugs that are currently available. This is good, but not good enough because a third of patients still don't get better. What we know from patients with depression is that as a group, they have increased levels of a number of inflammatory proteins compared to people who do not have depression. But what we don't know is that whether this is a cause or consequence of depression. We have pinned down a particular protein, an inflammatory marker, and we are testing whether reducing activity of that protein with a novel anti-inflammatory drug could improve mood and cognition in some patients with depression. So patients are randomized into either to receive the drug or placebo, and we bring these patients to a NIHR-funded clinical research facility where they receive an intravenous infusion. So this is a double-blind study, so at that stage, neither researchers or participants know whether they are taking the drug or placebo. So this is to avoid bias, that conscious or unconscious, that could be introduced by either parties. We follow up the patients every week for six weeks. So what we are hoping to uh, assess at the end of the study is to compare that the group that had received the anti-inflammatory drug with the group that received placebo. We want to see whether anti-inflammatory drugs leads to improvements in mood and memory function in patients with depression. Charities play a crucial role in funding biomedical research in this country. Cancer is a good example of that. So when I went to medical school, a diagnosis of cancer w was similar to a death sentence. The picture has changed a great deal in the last 25 years, and that's essentially because of research investment in oncology and cancer research. About two-thirds of the total amount of money spent for cancer research comes from public fundraising by charities. Compared to cancer in the UK, the public fundraising for mental health research is less than 3%. So if we want to improve mental health outcomes for uh, our society, we do need to, uh, to invest in mental health research more because we desperately need new treatment, we desperately need uh, uh, better health outcomes for our patients. What this grant will help me to do is, number one, accelerate uh, recruitment uh, in the study, so we will be able to open a new recruitment site, which is hugely exciting, and the other is new science. So, of course, science moves fast. So, five years ago, when I applied to Wellcome Trust for this project, there are certain aspects of scientific experiments that I hadn't planned because I didn't know about those experiments that they existed or techniques didn't exist. So now that those processes have been developed and with the help of this new J. Moulton grant, we'll be able to do these new immunological assays to pin down exact biological mechanisms through which we see improvement in mood. All the antidepressants that we currently use are designed to increase serotonin levels or activity in our brain. But it's such a heterogeneous condition, not one patient with depression is the same as the other person. So if this study shows that anti-inflammatory drugs improve mood, that would tell us that inflammation could be a cause for depression. So that would transform our understanding of the causes of depression and also how we go about treating this condition. And that could make a huge impact for thousands of, if not millions of people who suffer from these conditions in this country and globally.